Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this module of convex optimization course, we will talk about one of the application of duality. In particular, the use of Perush Kahan Tucker KKT conditions in solving an optimization problem analytically. So we will look at uh, one of the application in communication systems where we want to maximize the sum rate or the channel capacity uh, in a MIMO systems. So we will talk about uh, the formulation of this sum rate maximization problem in communications and later we will solve the problem using KKT conditions. So we start with the recap of the KKT optimality conditions. So for a primal optimization problem, uh, we have a Lagrange dual problem. And uh, again, we note that the primal optimization problem does not need to be convex, uh, but Lagrange dual problem is always convex, uh, irrespective of the fact uh, that primal optimization problem is convex or not. So when we solve a primal problem, we get a optimal point x star. And when we solve Lagrange dual problem, we obtain lambda star and mu star. So we denote the optimal points of these two problems with x star and lambda star mu star. So these optimal points satisfy Karush Kahan Tucker KKT conditions. So so we discussed the four conditions. The first one was uh, primal feasibility that simply requires that optimal point X star must satisfy uh, the constraints of the primal optimization problem. And the second one was uh, dual feasibility. As the name suggests, uh, we require the dual variable, optimal dual variable lambda star to satisfy uh, the inequality constraint of a Lagrange dual problem. So we require each lambda i star should be greater than or equal to zero for i is equal to one, two to n. And then we had the, the third condition that was complementary slackness. And that simply states that lambda i star fi of x star is equal to zero. And we have uh, these equations for i is equal to one, two to m. And finally, we had the fourth condition and that was stationarity. Uh, and this condition states that the gradient of the Lagrangian at optimal points should be equal to zero. So gradient of the Lagrangian evaluated at x star, lambda star, mu star, so this should be equal to zero. And so these conditions hold uh, when we had an assumption of a strong duality or when the duality gap is zero. So this was a, a quick overview of KKT conditions. Now we look at the sum rate maximization problem in communication systems. So we first model uh, this, this problem in communication systems. So we say that we have a MIMO system in which we have n number of antennas uh, and n channels of equal bandwidth B. So we say we have these n antennas, so 1, 2 to n uh, of the transmitter and the bandwidth of each channel uh, is same and that is denoted by B. And we also define notation. Let's say XI denotes the power that is allocated to ith antenna. So, so XI X, uh, is a power that is denoted to the ith antenna. And uh, so let's also denote GI, the channel power gain uh, associated with the ith antenna. So G1 is the gain for the first antenna, G2 is the power gain for the second antenna and so on and so forth. So we also consider that uh, the noise across each channel is Gaussian uh, with zero mean and variance sigma square. And uh, we also assume that the power at the transmitter is limited and uh, so let's say the total power available at the transmitter is, is denoted by xt. Using the notation we have defined, uh, we can denote the output power or we can define the output power across i channel as yi, which is gi xi plus ni. 
so x i as uh, the power uh, allocated to the ith antenna so gi is the gain uh, for that ith antenna and ni is a power across ith channel so uh, and we assume that these channels are parallel so there is no cross channel uh, interference so we consider a problem that that we want to determine the power allocated to each channel that is we want to determine x1 x2 to xn and that is that denote the power allocated to different channels such that the sum rate uh, is maximized sum rate is also referred to as total communication rate uh, or the capacity of uh, the channel let us formulate this problem so communication rate or channel capacity of i channel is given by uh, a very standard well-known uh, shannon hartley equation that says that the channel capacity of the i channel is denoted by ci and uh, that is given by bandwidth times log to the base 2 of 1 plus SNR of the IF channel. So SNR is signal to noise ratio. And we note that uh, signal to noise ratio for IF channel can be formulated as SNR i is given by GI XI. So that is a signal power divided by sigma square and that is in fact uh, a noise power or expected value of the uh, noise power so when, when we substitute this snri in this channel rate equation so what we get is the ch uh, channel rate uh, for the is channel that is given by b log to 1 plus gi xi over sigma square so using this communication rate or channel rate channel capacity we can define sum rate and which is that which is in fact a sum of uh, the channel rates uh, of all the channels we have so let us define the sum rate so we use, say we denote it with function f of x and that is given by sum of all the channel rates some some of the communication rates and uh, we know that ci is given by b log to 1 plus snri so when you substitute this what we get is that summation i is equal to 1 to n log to 1 plus gi xi over sigma square and since b is uh, same for every channel so we have taken b out of the summation so we note that uh, this function is concave so since this is a sum of concave functions since log is a concave function and f of x is is a sum of n number of concave functions and therefore f of x is concave so we can uh, formulate an optimization problem in which we want to maximize this sum rate so we can formulate an optimization problem as so we take uh, b is equal to 1 without any loss of generality and we can also change uh, this log to to the uh, to natural log because uh, we can always divide uh, this with uh, log 2 of uh, e and that won't change uh, the overall sum rate maximization so we take b is equal to 1 and we take log 2 uh, as natural log so now we note that this won't change uh, the optimal point or this won't change uh, the maximization of this uh, sum rate so we have an optimization problem in which we want to maximize uh, this sum rate and uh, do we have constraints here so if you recall so we had uh, the limited power available at the transmitter so that means uh, we require that the total power should be less than or equal to effect we want to utilize all the power so we require that total power allocated to all the channels should be equal to the total power you have uh, at the transmitter and we also require that power should be non-negative uh, for 
each channel. So we have two constraints here. So first constraint, the first constraint is that we require that x should be greater than or equal to zero. That is, we have non-negative power. And the second constraint is that we require that sum of the powers should be equal to the total power available we have, that is xt. So let me rewrite uh, these two constraints as uh, in standard form. So the first one we can write as minus x less than or equal to zero. And the second constraint I can write uh, by using uh, a vector of all ones of size n as one transpose x is equal to xt. So I note here that uh, this inequality constraint is constraint function is linear and we have an affine equality constraint and we are maximizing a concave function that is equal to minimizing a negative of this uh, a convex function so we are minimizing a convex function subject to uh, linear inequality constraint and affine equality constraint and therefore this optimization problem is a convex optimization problem let me rewrite this problem as a minimization problem before we attempt to solve this problem so we want to minimize uh, a negative of the sum rate or total communication rate subject to minus x less than or equal to zero and one transpose x is equal to uh, the total power available xt so now uh, we want to use KKT conditions to solve this optimization problem and obtain a, an analytical solution. So we're going to use KKT conditions. So to solve this problem and uh, we can first consider that we have optimal points noted by X star, Lambda star and Mu star since we have both equality and inequality constraints here so uh, so lambda star belongs to rn since uh, we have inequality constraint since we have n number of uh, inequality constraints and mu should be uh, a scalar here because we only have one affine uh, equality constraint okay so let's start using kkt conditions so we had uh, four kkt conditions primal feasibility, dual feasibility, complementary slackness, and stationarity. Let's start with primal feasibility. So we require that uh, x star should satisfy the constraints. That means uh, minus x star, in fact, minus x star should be less than or equal to zero. And we require one transpose x star is equal to uh, total power xt. So X star should satisfy uh, the constraints of the primal problem or X star is primal feasible. Uh, let's talk about the second condition, dual feasibility. So we require the dual variable lambda star should be greater than or equal to zero. So, okay, let's talk about uh, the third uh, condition that is uh, stationarity. So we will first uh, discuss stationarity and then later we will talk about uh, complementary slackness. So this condition states that the gradient of Lagrangian at optimal points should be equal to zero. Here the gradient is with respect to x. So let's quickly formulate Lagrangian first and before we take derivative of this or before we take gradient of the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian will be given by x lambda mu and that is simply objective function plus uh, mu transpose 1 transpose x minus xt so equality constraint plus lambda transpose minus of x or we can write minus lambda transpose x so this is Lagrangian so we note here that we do not have any coupling uh, between different components or xi uh, and xj when i is not equal to j so they are they are not uh, appearing as a composite term so we can take uh, gradient of lagrangian and substitute that equal to zero instead uh, we take a derivative of the lagrangian with respect to xi and substitute that equal to zero 
and, and for, we have n number of such uh, equations for each i i is equal to 1 to n so we take derivative of lagrangian with respect to xi so partial error partial xi should be given by so negative 1 over gi uh, negative 1 over 1 plus gi xi over sigma square and then derivative of uh, this term 1 plus gi xi over sigma square and that should be equal to gi over sigma square uh, so what should be derivative of uh, this term uh, mu so here we have sum of x and this is uh, just a constant here so the derivative of this with respect to xi should be equal to 1 and so we have uh, plus mu and what should be derivative of this term with respect to xi that should be uh, lambda i because this is minus sum of lambda xi which is derivative with respect to xi you only get uh, lambda i so we get minus lambda i and uh, uh, let me rearrange these terms uh, so you can get minus gi over sigma square so if uh, we take lcm here you get sigma square plus gi xi this sigma square will be cancelled with this sigma square and what you get is uh, minus gi over uh, sigma square plus gi xi plus mu minus lambda i and uh, using stationarity condition uh, we require that uh, this derivative uh, this lagrangian uh, sorry gradient of lagrangian should be equal to zero or that simply means we have we require this partial derivative of lagrangian with respect to xi is equal to zero and when we substitute with this equal to zero uh, so we can get uh, mu star and that is equal to lambda i star plus gi star over sigma square plus gi xi star which is in fact just just this equation and you substitute equal to zero and instead of xi you use xi star for mu you use mu star and for lambda i we use lambda i star because uh, we require the gradient uh, equal to zero when we have these uh, xi mu and lambda i are optimal points and so we have uh, n number of these equations so because we require the partial derivative equal to zero for each i we leave this equation which we have obtained using stationarity kkt condition um, and we start looking at the fourth kkt condition that is complementary slackness uh, before we use this equation again so let's talk about complementary slackness so the complementary slackness condition states that lambda i star times inequality constraint function is associated with the lambda i should be equal to zero that simply states that lambda i star x i star equal to zero so we can have two cases from this complementary slackness condition the case one is when lambda i star is equal to zero that implies ki star greater than zero so when we substitute this in when we substitute this lambda i star is equal to zero in the stationarity equation so we get mu star is equal to in gi over sigma square plus gi x i star so if i take reciprocal of uh, this equation i get one over mu star uh, is equal to x i star plus sigma square over uh, gi and since x i star is greater than zero we can say one over mu star is greater than sigma square over gi and uh, so we can uh, from this equation we can also obtain x i star so we can say x i star is equal to one over mu star minus sigma square over gi so in fact this is x i star here right so when uh, one over mu star is greater than sigma square over gi x i star is one over mu star minus sigma square over gi let's talk about case two so in case two when x i star is equal to zero that means lambda i star is greater than zero and when we substitute this x i star is equal to zero in the stationarity equation again so we get mu star is equal to gi over sigma square plus 
uh, lambda i star or since lambda is lambda i star is greater than zero so mu star is greater than g i over sigma square or when i take a reciprocal of this i get one over mu star less than sigma square over g i so if we compare these two so when one over mu star is less than sigma square over g i x i star is equal to zero and when one over mu star is greater than sigma square over g i so x i star takes uh, this value so if i combine these two cases so we can express x i star as a piecewise uh, function that one over uh, and this should, x i star should be equal to one over mu star minus sigma square over g i when one over mu star is greater than sigma square over g i and that x i star should be equal to zero when one over one one over mu star is less than sigma square over g i so and uh, we can also note that so what we have here this condition one over mu star greater than equal to sigma square over gi in fact this is what we have here so when this function and this value here is greater than or equal to zero x i star take this value otherwise x i star is equal to zero or so we can write x i star as a maximum of 1 over mu star minus sigma square over gi so when this is non-negative x i star is equal to this value and otherwise it should be equal to zero so we take maximum of this value and zero and we call it x i star we have determined x i star optimal power allocated to ith antenna using these kkt conditions but x i star requires the knowledge about mu star because we have one over mu star here so to find mu star uh, we use the primal feasibility condition so that is we note that x star is primal feasible that simply means one transpose x star is equal to x t the total power available as a transmitter and uh, we can write in summation that sum of x i star is equal to x t so if i substitute x i star uh, from the uh, from the previous equation so what i get is summation i is equal to 1 to n maximum of 1 over mu star minus sigma square over gi comma 0 is equal to xt and so using this equation we can determine mu star and we have x i star what we obtained earlier that is maximum of 1 over mu star minus sigma square over gi comma 0 so if you see these two equations are coupled so by changing 1 over mu star in the first equation would change x i star and that is being that is in fact used in the first equation so using this first equation we can determine mu star and in the second equation we can determine x i star so since they are coupled uh, but we note that the first equation is a linear function of 1 over mu star so you keep on increasing 1 over mu star uh, that will change x i star but you keep on increasing 1 over mu star such that the sum of x i is equal to the total power available you have at the transmitter so this method of finding uh, x i star and mu star or 1 over mu star is called water filling method let's also review the interpretation of this water filling method or why do we call this method as water filling so without loss of any generality we assume that g1 that is the gain of the i for the first channel is greater than or equal to the gain of the second channel and so on and so forth it simply means that we index the channels in the order of decreasing power gains and we also note that x i star is given by a maximum of one over mu star minus sigma square over g i and zero so this quantity here sigma square over g i so this quantity in fact decides whether 
x i star should be equal to uh, zero or or this term, assuming one over mu star is fixed. So uh, let me plot this sigma square over g i uh, for different channels uh, of the transmitter. So on x axis I take uh, the channel number one two three, and I plot uh, this quantity sigma square over g i. So here we have sigma square over g1, sigma square over g2, sigma square over g3 and so on and so forth. Since g1 is greater than or equal to g2, sigma square over g2 is greater than sigma square over uh, g1. Okay. And if I define this 1 over mu star, so we say this 1 over mu star is fixed. Right? So I keep this 1 over mu star and I start pouring water from the top right and the total power the total water I have is is xt and uh, if I and if this one over mu star defines the limit uh, the filling of the water so and when I fill uh, these channels with power so we get we get these powers or the water is filled in these channels since uh, sigma square over g5 is greater than 1 over mu star so we do not allocate any power to the fifth channel and and so on and so forth right and we note that if 1 over mu star is chosen such that the sum of all of these powers so x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to xt so we keep 1 over mu star and if this is less than xt we increase 1 over mu star say if i increase 1 over mu star to this value and i start filling the water again so we can get these powers so this is the interpretation of the water filling method or why do we call this method as as water filling we have demonstrated the use of kkt conditions in solving a practical problem that is maximization of sum rate in communication systems uh, we stop here and we will continue in the subsequent module and uh, thank you very much